Continuing on with the build of the Bob panel 4-axis board, we're going to do the relay coil driver today. And that gets crammed into this little corner of the board right over here. Looking at the top, it's this corner on the bottom. Uh, most of these components uh, I'm going to go ahead and mount on the bottom. Uh, most people will want to mount the terminal block on the top, but I'm going to put mine on the bottom. Um, the reason why you'd want to mount it on the top is because once you've mounted the board to a surface, you won't be able to get a screwdriver into the terminal block screws in order to connect wires to it. I'm mounting my board a little bit differently. I'll be mounting it to a uh, to this connector, which actually provides more than enough mechanical support. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this on the bottom, but because I am smart enough to read the directions on how to assemble it in the assembly manual, I am not going to do that until after I have soldered in these other components because right there in that hole, which you probably can't see, is where this diode goes. Right here, it's marked on the top side of the board, but that lead right there is right next to the terminal block and if I solder in the terminal block first and then solder in that diode will melt the plastic of the terminal block. It would actually probably be okay but let's not do that. Instead we'll go ahead and install the diode. I'm going to install the diode on the bottom here and then we'll install a uh, capacitor and a little resistor and then the uh, driver transistor and then down here we're going to install the uh, relay indicator LED and another little resistor right here which uh, will drive that signal um, into the LED so that we can see when it's on or off. So starting off with the diode, first off we want to go ahead and pull off the little paper gizmos here and we will bend the leads at about the right place which is basically right up against the diode and although this is marked on the top of the board here I'm going to get my correct orientation and then install it on the bottom readjust the light here a little bit maybe we can get a little bit better light on the subject okay so I don't know if you can see but there's a band a silver band on one end of the diode which matches with the double line right there on the silk screen so the diode needs to go in like that so I'm just going to turn the board over and slip it into these holes right here and then before I solder it I'm actually going to make sure that I have it in the right holes hey look at that I do and as I've said earlier I like to leave a little bit of lead length so that if anything goes wrong uh, it is a lot easier to replace the component or move it to a new location so I'm going to set that, oh wow, I'm going to set that right about there, he says. Okay, and just splay the leads out so it'll stay, and then go ahead and solder that down. Soldering iron that I'm using is a very old 1970s soldering iron, which I love. It is, in fact, temperature regulated but I have turned the temperature all the way up to try and simulate the worst possible soldering conditions show you that this can be done with a cheap soldering iron key point is to get the heat on and get it off quickly don't hold the iron if you're not getting the solder to wet stop pull away let it cool down for a minute before you continue on okay so that components in place I'm gonna bend it out of the way ever so slightly we have a nice little capacitor here that drops in right here, C10. This is just a little ceramic disc capacitor, so the orientation doesn't matter on it. And it is a bit difficult to get any lead length on that because there's hardly any lead to speak of. I'm going to try and get at least a little bit there. I'll go ahead and solder that on.
Now, I was probably on that a little bit longer than I should have been, but it's just a capacitor, so hopefully it'll be okay. Now, this little resistor is marked R2, 2K2, and what this does is it brings the in-strobe signal. Let's see if you can see that there. It brings the, the not-strobe signal from the parallel port over into the base of this driver transistor here. So the point is that this is a, uh, a driver that's coupling a signal and it is marked as a 2K2 resistor which has got to be this guy because red is 2 and this resistor is all red. It's not this guy because this guy is, if we can get a focus on it, orange. Okay. Now I'm I'm doing all of that because I'm trying to read the colors of the light or of the uh, the of the uh, resistors, uh, but you'd be amazed at the number of people who are partially colorblind, or at the number of people who print colors on resistors who are colorblind. Uh, they will print colors on these things that look red and aren't. So one of the things that I always advise people to do is to take the resistor, get yourself a, a, a cheap um, meter. Uh, this is actually a fairly decent meter. It's a fluke. And then measure the resistance. So there's your 2-2. Two, two. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. So we know that that's a 2K2 resistor, no question. I really advise doing that because uh, I think of all the kits that we get back from somebody that, that had a problem with it, nine times out of ten the problem is that they soldered the resistor in the wrong place. It happens all the time. So the resistors on this board are soldered and standing up, so we're just going to do it like this. And I'm going to put this in, um, oops, it's over here. <laughs> I'm again going to put this in down on the bottom. It just goes in right here. See, I'll probably do it this way. Or not. There we go. Finally got it in. I was beginning to think that I had filled that hole up with solder. Um, if you do that, and I'll probably show you that in a minute just to show you how to recover from that particular error. If you do that though, if you ever do fill up uh, a hole with solder while you're soldering in one component, you know if the hole's next to the other component, you might accidentally fill in uh, another component hole with solder when you don't intend to. And the way to recover from that is, believe it or not, to um, heat up the hole and then strike it against the surface that you're working on. And normally you want to be very careful about the components that are installed when you do that. But like for example, if I had filled up this hole with solder, what I would do is get on it with a soldering iron, get it all hot, and then I would raise up the board and the iron and then go like that and it would knock the solder out of there. The other way of doing is with solder wick if you have some or with a vacuum uh, desoldering tool. Um, I personally prefer the whack method. Uh, there's just something very therapeutic about it. And then we have our drive transistor right here. Let's not lose that resistor. And that installs over here on the bottom of the board. Now, just like with the voltage regulator, there is a pattern printed on the board there. It's this double line right here, and then this shape, which is actually just clipped off right on the edge of the board. And that matches this shape, and this heat sink right here is the double back line, okay? So it goes on there like this, not like that. If you want to install it on the top of the board, you certainly can, but you want to make sure that each one of the pins goes in there in the same hole. So you just go around the board like this and drop it in then on this side, okay? Not like this, but like this because that matches the silk screen on this side, okay? And we will just drop that in there. Now the way I'm doing this is a little unusual. I'm I'm going to set it up for regular.
regulator. For this one, it probably doesn't need a heat sink. Um, the, the, the particular driver transistor that we're using here has an enormous capacity. Uh, but in case it does, what I'm going to do is just leave a little bit of lead length and let it sit straight down. Um, I will have a, a metal a piece of metal right here that this is going through, and then what I'll probably do is just screw this over to, the, to that piece of metal, and it will provide plenty of heat sinking. There's a lot of different options there. Now this one's a little bit difficult to bend the leads on. I will try with my fingernail, but probably won't succeed. And if you don't have mighty strong fingernails like I do, my wife's always mad at me because her fingernails break and mine don't, and mine tend to grow a little bit long, and hers do not. Um, but what you can do is just bend out the leads a little bit with your handy-dandy pliers, which you always keep handy. And then we just want to set it up on something. And again, since this is a multi-lead component and we want it to be in a particular position, what I'm going to do here is just solder one pin first. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to do the one pin. And I'm going to let that cool. And then holding it by a part that's not hot, I'm going to reheat. It would be really dumb to touch that pin while I heat it, right? So I'm just going to reheat this right here and bring the unit into the alignment that I want which is almost that. Maybe go back just a little bit. Just heat up the pin until it moves. Hold it and we're done. Okay, now, now that that's in position, it's not going anywhere. I don't need to worry about it. And I can go ahead and solder in the other pins. Okay. No, you know what? That was too long. Really shouldn't be on the pin that long get off of it, let it cool for a minute, maybe blow some air pack by it, and then heat it up again and hit it and then get off of it. That's especially true with semiconductors like that, okay? Now you can feel this is, this actually got a little bit warm right here, okay? That's not a good sign. Um, <clears throat> for a power transistor, it's okay, but if that were any other component, yeah, a little bit of heat stress there, I probably shouldn't have done that. Okay. I want those little leads picked up and tossed away where they can't accidentally short something. That happens too. Get a little piece of something that gets in there and then it causes a short. Next thing you know, it's all up in smoke. So we don't want that. <clears throat> okay, so next then is this, uh, yeah. R3, which goes in right here. Now we don't have a value marked on that because the value is not critical. Uh, this is a 330 ohm resistor, but just about anything from 488, 560, 330, anything in that general range should be just fine. And again, I'm going to install this on the bottom just because I like that. Keep the top clean. Uh, in my case, I'm going to be doing some other stuff with the top. Most people, and you might want to um, install all of these components on the top of the board so that you don't have to have as, as big a spacer on the bottom for when you mount the board on a surface. Okay? And we will go ahead and just quickly solder that on. Or not quickly. That's one. And there's the other on it and off it. Left a little bit of lead length there. So if it turns out that I put it in the wrong holes I can always cut the leads off. I would just cut it right there and cut it right there and then take this piece and put it in where it actually belongs. Okay. So then we've got the LED. Now the LED is a polarized component. You'll notice that one lead one lead is longer than the other and on the board right here there is one of these pads that's square I'm not sure that you can see that on the video I hope you can if this camera will focus there we go and this pad right here is square there can you see it that pad is round so the long lead goes in the square hole and we're through and of course this is going on the top of the board because we want it to be um, 
we want it to be visible but leave a little bit of lead length maybe not quite that much okay and that goes around this way now see wouldn't it have been smart of me to solder on that LED first before soldering in the resistor because as it is, I'm going to have a heck of a time getting in there with the iron. Um, I'm telling you, people, think about what you're doing before you do it. He says, talking to himself. Okay, I think I can just get past it just right here. Okay. Make sure that our LED is more or less straight there. Yeah, should be fine. I'll go ahead and solder the other lead. Okay. Uh, and then we've got a couple of leads to snip here. You notice how I'm grabbing hold of these leads right after I've soldered them? And that's because, you know, getting on there and getting off of there quick means that the heat doesn't transfer into the component or the lead too awfully much and uh, you don't have that heat buildup that causes damage to components or whatever else. Okay, so now this one, again, normally you would want to set this in here on the top and solder it like that. I'm going to put this in on the bottom. And this is another component where we want the component to be flush. So what I'm going to do is just see if I can't set it so it's more or less held in there. I will solder up one lead. And this takes a little bit more heat because it's a big component. And then keeping my finger off this side, because that would burn me, I'm just going to touch it on this side right here. And I'll go ahead and reheat that and just make sure that it's flush against the board. Check it there. That's good. And we will go ahead and solder the other side. Okay, and that is the end of that. I think we're good to go. Uh, I will go ahead and... Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to get a relay ready. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't have one handy, do I? Uh, I will have to show you this working later on. Um, just real quick, I will show you that the power supply regulator that I hooked up the last time works. I just use a little 9-volt battery to provide some power to uh, get that working. And there you can see a nice glowing green light. Well, you could. Um, and if we had a signal to this, I would show you a nice uh, glowing green signal there. But I'll have to show that to you later. Alright? Thanks for watching.